right arm. All right, good. Bring it back. This motion, that's that compression. That's what I want you to remember. Set the gun down. We're going to talk about. Hi, guys. This is Peyton with Girls Gone Right. I'm headed to the Nashville Armory where I got my gun to go shoot at the range and they're gonna show me how to clean my gun because I've never cleaned a gun before. So I'm new to shooting guns. I don't know all of these things and gun maintenance is really important. I believe like you really should clean your gun every time you go shooting at a range. I think uh, so we'll find out all the questions today and get some answers to those and I'm gonna shoot a little I'll get some of that and then I'll show you guys how to clean a gun with the Nashville Armory check you later you ever go on a hike and make waypoints a waypoint so you ever go on like a hike or take a road trip I'm um, taking road trips, taking road trips. you plan little stops on yeah. the way right it helps you remember so all these silly things I'm gonna have you repeat are kind of like waypoints in your journey okay. so when you come here and I'm not here or go to a range or whatever you can think Oh, railroad tracks. Okay, cool. Mr. Miyagi. And you're going to be able to get the stance and the presentation down. Okay. So, go ahead and stand right there. You're going to stand right in front of that target. Now, this is one way to do it. It's not the way. I am audacious enough to think this is overall one of the best ways to do it. All right. We're going to stand with our feet about a shoulder width apart. All right. It's going to be a different distance based on the size of the person, right? Okay. Next, we are standing on railroad tracks. What are we standing on? Railroad tracks. Now, if I, my feet are off to the side like this, I fall off the railroad tracks. So, mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep my feet forward. All right, now you're right-handed. Yes. Raise your right fist in the air. Take a step forward with your left foot. Right, now say right power. Right power. I'm just kidding, it's a dumb joke I say. It makes everybody laugh, right? I say it to everybody, everybody thinks it's funny. I don't know what to say for the lefties, but you're never gonna forget that <laughs> no. now. Hold your hand out like this. Check it out, we're on balance now, mm -hmm. all right? If I was this way, I'd be a little bit off balance. Now we still should be able to shoot with their other foot forward, yeah. but if we're starting out, just put your left foot forward. Our knees are slightly bent. You ever box or yeah. anything? All right, so you know a boxing stance, my feet are about a 45 degree angle, my knees are bent. This is a great fighting stance. Mm -hmm. This is a great gun fighting stance. The mm -hmm. knees are the same, only my feet are going straight forward. Now you'll see plenty of great shooters with their feet off a little bit, but there's advantages. And why not start out and set ourselves up for success? So both feet are forward, our knees are slightly bent. I want you to raise your fingers in the air like this. I want you to touch your hips. All right, touch them a couple times, just like this. I want you to imagine a metal rod going fingertip to fingertip. Mm -hmm. That's a hinge. Say hinge. Hinge. All right, keep your head up. I want you to hinge forward, back and forth a couple times. Say railroad tracks. Railroad tracks. Hinge. Hinge. All right, cool. Now, we're going to hinge forward with our head up just so our nose is over our toes. Where's our nose? Over our toes. Awesome. What we're doing right now is we're, set, we're using our muscular skeletal structure to provide support. Okay. All right, and help mitigate recoil. Okay. All right, now, relax. I want you to take your chin, touch it all the way down to your chest. Take a deep breath like that. Sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> take another deep breath like that. Oh, this sucks. Okay, now stand up nice and tall. Take a deep breath. In a gunfight, we need oxygen. A lot of people have a natural tendency to drop their head down. Sometimes if I'm not thinking about it, I get all muscly and everything. Mm -hmm. It's not a good idea. The best idea is just to stand normal, get plenty of oxygen, we bring the gun up to our head. Okay. All right? He or she who wins gunfights is he or she who puts rounds on target accurately first. Okay. So we just want to be as efficient as possible. Okay. So we're on our railroad tracks. we got our left foot forward. Open up your stance just a little bit more. There we go. All right. Our nose is slightly over our toes. We're leaning forward. Now we're leaning forward with our head up like we're doing a push-up with a straight back. Not like we're taking an Instagram photo and you know, we're not arcing our back. Mm -hmm. We're not bending our back like this. Just hinging forward slightly. Next, hands up like this. Monkey with a symbol. Say it. <laughs> Monkey with a symbol. Monkey. Remember this? This is our workspace, okay. right? But now you're not going to forget, right? Monkey with a symbol. Now you saw Karate Kid? No. No, you haven't seen Karate Kid? All right, you got some homework to do. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to extend our hands out like this. All right, now bend your elbows back just a little bit. Do me a favor, drop your, shirt, drop your arms down. All right, I was going to say your shoulders down. That doesn't make sense. Drop your arms down. Okay, up like a zombie. Just do the zombie. Clap and go. That's it right there. You see how your elbows are out? Yeah. All right. We want our elbows pointed out. Our wrists are going to be locked. Now bring it up to your head. There we go. Bring it in. Bring it back out. This is the motion that I want you to memorize, ingrain in your brain. This is called compression and driving the gun forward. All right. Bring it in here. Make a little finger gun. Point at that target. All right. Now repeat after me. Put it down here. Go like this. We are not bowling. We are not bowling. Do it again. We are not bowling. We are not bowling. All right, bring it up here. 
We are not fishing. We are not fishing. We are not fishing. All right, bring it in here to the center. We are driving the gun. We are driving the gun. Elbows out. There you go. Bring it back. Bring it. All right, so never ever again do I want to see you go to a gun range and pick up the gun and go like this. All right, I just did this active shooter course with a bunch of cops and a bunch of those dudes are running around like, oh, oh. Yeah. This is wasted energy. Uh -huh. If you have a target or you have a threat, check this out. All right? When I draw, the second this holster's out, the, or the gun is out of the holster, the second it's out, boom, it's pointed mm -hmm. at that threat. All right? Whether I'm carrying strong side, right? I got the battle belt over there and then it's just like this. All right? The second it's out, it's pointed at that threat. Yeah. Do me a favor, just stand normal, point your finger at that target. All right, now I want you to raise your hand up, and keep pointing at that target. Keep your finger pointed, so raise your hand up, now drop it down low, keep the finger pointed at it. Off to the side, all right, off to the other side. Do a big circle, keep your finger pointed at it. Keep your finger pointed at it. All right, now write your name, no, I'm just kidding. The point is, all right, you ever see Star Wars before Disney killed it, or Star Trek, or any of that, you don't watch movies, okay. No, I don't watch There's a thing called a tractor beam, it just sucks things in. What I want you to visualize, is the muzzle, there's a tractor beam coming out. And it's always, no matter where it goes, pointed at the threat. So when we have our finger guns right here, we're already pointed at the threat. And as we bring it out, we're still pointed. All right, when are we doing this? Friends don't let friends lean back and shoot. We hinge forward so our nose is where? Above our toes, oh, or over, over our, our toes. toes. Yeah, all right, go ahead, pick up your firearm. Yeah. firearm. Now when you pick it up, we're gonna bring it into our workspace, all right? Now, remember, butterfly high in the sky, cool, all right? Cool girl, thumbs up. Let's get that good two-handed grip, swoosh it on up in there. There we go, that looks great. All right, so we're gonna look at our target, all right? And our finger's gonna be pointed right at that target, and so is the thumb on the other side. Okay, my head is up, I'm gonna bring it up into my eye line. Excellent, bring it back. Drive it back up into the eye line. All right, good, bring it back. This motion, that's that compression, that's what I'm gonna remember. Set the gun down, we're gonna talk about setting the really quick. Then we're going to do some dry fire, then we're going to go out and shoot. All right, check it out. We got to try to stay in frame here. All right, we have a front sight and a rear sight, and we have a target. That's three things to focus on. And I think it is super wise to learn how to do iron sights before you learn how to do a red dot. Red dots are awesome, they're fast, and they're getting more and more reliable. But you have iron sights, and most guns have iron sights, right? Mm -hmm. So we have the front sight post and the rear sight post. When we line them up, I'm sure you learned a little bit of this with the rifle, right? Mm -hmm. If it's too high, I'm gonna shoot high. If it's too low, I'm gonna shoot low. So we want equal height. Equal height. Excellent. Now, same thing, if I'm too far to the left or too far to the right, I'm gonna shoot off to the left or right. So the space in between coming through here, we want equal light. Equal light. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The light shining through, we want equal. We want this distance equal. So we want equal height, equal, equal light. light. Make sense? All right, now check it out. If I put it on the target like this, am I gonna hit that bullseye? No. Why not? Equal height, equal light. So oh, so where's the round going to go? Uh, it's going to go a lot lower. Where's the round going to go? Mm -hmm. If the gun's like this, it's going to go up. Oh, uh, okay. That makes sense? If the gun's like this, yeah. check it out. If the gun's like this, I'm going to shoot high. Yeah. It's like this, I'm going to shoot low. I know, like on an AR, Grant said that with that, it's you need to shoot two inches lower than you're seeing. So what he's probably referring to is ballistics and zero. Mm -hmm. Yes, your holdovers. Okay. So like my rifle has a hundred yard zero. Okay. And with how high up I have my, cause I, I use a lower mount than most people. Mm -hmm. So I have to aim at like 10 yards. I have to aim about four inches, uh, about three inches above around there in order for it to hit the bullseye. Okay. All right? And yep. the reason we do that is because bullets are always falling. So that yeah. with handguns and most handgun differences, at least for us starting out, we don't really have to worry about that right okay. now. What we want to do, because we're only going to shoot out the five yards today. Okay. So what we want to do is just line up our sights, equal height, equal height, perfectly. Okay. All right, so go ahead and pick up, we're going to talk about focal planes. Go ahead, get in your stance and pick up your firearm. All right, so. Open up your uh, feet a little bit so it's the same distance as your shoulders. All right. All right, so. Wait. Cool girl thumbs up, start with this thumb. There's a couple different ways to do this. I'm gonna mirror you, I'm gonna do it left-handed. So I either swoosh on up in there, check out this trigger finger. Go like this. Oh, no. okay. Swoosh on in there, wrap around. Rotate your gun this way. Middle finger. There we go, ring finger, pinky, and jam that guy under. Underneath the trigger guard, what you can do, all right, hold on, you're doing fine. Give it a good, tight grip. There we go. All right, high up on that back strap. Now wrap that other hand in there. 
There we go. How does that feel? Rotate this forward. There we go. Okay. How does that feel? Better. Awesome. If you can bring that up a little bit higher. Perfect. Bring it in. Compression. All right. Now our pointer finger is pointing it already at that target. So there we go. Drive it up into our eye line. Excellent. You're doing it with both eyes open already. Oh, are you left eye dominant? Yes. Sir. All right. So we won't work on that today, but I have a technique that unless one of your eyes is super fucked up, I can fix it. All okay. right. It's just kind of like being right-handed. You're used to doing it, but there's so much more involved with using yeah. your right hand with your eye. Just focus. Uh -huh. So I have a technique that, and we can show you afterward, that'll get you right eye dominant. I used okay. to be left eye dominant, but it wasn't so bad I couldn't shoot rifles with my right eye, yeah. but we'll get you right eye dominant. Okay. All right. So for now, we're going to do everything the same. Okay. Our head is up with a nice presentation. Our feet are forward. All right, we're gonna drive it up and you're just gonna turn your head to the right just a little bit so you can use your left eye. So since we have a target out, we're just going, always gonna keep that muzzle pointed out. Okay. All right, now drive it out and we're gonna work on focal planes. Drive it out. All right, now we have our sights lined up. Equal height, equal light. You see that front sight post through here? Shut your right eye. Wait, shut my eye. Shut yeah. your right eye. Yeah. There we go, okay. I'm gonna touch you on your hip. I want you to hinge forward. Keep your head up, head up, head up. There we go. All right, now what I'd like you to do is focus on the target. Okay. So your sights are blurry. Are you focused on the target? Yeah. Okay, your sights are blurry? Yeah. Good. Focus on the rear sight. Wait, the rear sight. Okay. Pick your head up. Pick your head up so you can breathe. There you go. Are you focused on the rear sight? Yeah. Excellent. Is your front sight a little blurry? Yeah. Is the target blurry? Yeah. Good. Now, focus on the front sight. Okay, got it. All right. Rear sight's a little blurry? Yeah. Target's a little blurry? Yeah. This is how we shoot. We focus on the front sight post. The reason I had you go back and forth is so that way you understand different focal planes. Yeah. Right? This is the best because we can still see this and we can still see the target. But I care about this. This is all I care about. All right. Your elbows are out a little bit. Your wrists are locked. Your wrists do not move. Your elbows can move a little bit. Once we are dealing with recoil, go ahead and put your finger on the trigger. On the trigger. There we go. All right, I want you to slowly pull the trigger back so you get a little resistance. Go ahead and slowly pull the trigger back. Right, you're at what's called the wall. These P365s have a little bit of a longer wall, but still not a terrible trigger. Mm -hmm. Focus on that front sight post. All right, I want you to pick your head up. There we go. I want you to slowly pull that trigger. Slowly pull that trigger. Keep going. Slowly pull that trigger. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. All the way. Just like you're pushing a button. There we go. All right, now what's going to happen is the gun's going to recoil. It's going to come up like this. I want you to look at your front sight post. Front sight post, front sight post, front sight post, put front sight post back. That's our follow through. Right, finger up on the frame, compress, set the gun down. Oh, wait, do you ever play any sports? Kind of. Okay. Dabbled. All right, what's a, what's a sport yeah, that you dabbled in? Tennis. Tennis, awesome. When you're swinging that racket at that ball, do you stop the second the racket hits the ball? Yeah. Follow through. Follow through. Yeah. All right, following through with a handgun. Okay. All right. Now we let the gun surprise us. We do not anticipate when it goes off. We let it surprise us. And that's easier for girls to do than dudes because dudes want to be in control, yeah. right? I'm generalizing here, but it's true. So we have to be vulnerable, willing to be embarrassed, willing to be surprised. And we'll talk about more of that when we get out of the range. But as I pull the trigger, boom, the gun's gonna go off. It's gonna come up like this. I'm watching the front sight post. I'm not like, oh, did they hit my target? Mm -hmm. I will always hit my target if I properly have the sights on the target and the gun doesn't move as I pull the trigger. Okay. All that matters when it comes to accuracy. The only two things that matter, sights on target, gun doesn't move as I pull the trigger. Once the gun goes off, it can move. Mm -hmm. But I'm not looking at the target, I'm looking at my front sight post. I put it back. Yeah. Boom, I put it back. And then once I put it back, I decide, should I shoot again or not? And if not, my finger comes up on the frame and I can press. Okay. All right? Now, because this gun didn't actually go off, we're gonna rest the slide just slightly because it resets that trigger, okay? Here we go, get in your good stance. I'm gonna do a couple more dry fire drills and we're gonna go out and shoot. Good job with that grip. Excellent, now bring it into your workspace. Monkey with a symbol, right? Okay, go ahead, drive that gun up into your eye line. Good, all right. Good, your head's up, focus on that front sight post. Is this crystal clear? Mm -hmm. Equal height, equal light. Put your finger on the trigger. All right, I want you to pull the trigger back till you get that resistance, that's the wall. All right, you went through the wall, that's fine. Gun goes up like this, don't worry about it. Watch the front cycles, front cycles, front cycles. Put it back, put it back, put it back. Good, hold it right there. Go ahead, put your finger on the trigger. Go ahead, slowly pull that. Pull it, I'll yep. put it back. Yep. Boom, gun goes up, front cycles, front cycles. What are you looking at? There we go, look at your front cycles. Put it back, put it back. Extend your arms out a little bit more, elbows out. There we go, excellent. Now you're done shooting, so finger up on the frame. Yep. Compress. 
compress, so it's going down. Like this, we want to lean forward, okay? Go ahead, excellent, head up. Okay, focus on that front side post. Do I see that front side post through here? Yeah. Front side post crystal clear? Yeah. A little more in the back? Yeah. We're going to the front, all right, put your finger on the trigger. We're going to slowly pull that trigger back till we get to the wall. Remember that resistance? All right, now you're going to get trigger squeeze, remember? Yeah. Keep your head up. Keep your head up. Breathe. There we go. All right, let that gun surprise you. Slowly pull the trigger. Slowly. All right, not bad. Just a teeny little bit, but that's a bullseye. Anything in that outer ring around the X is a bullseye. There's no one to go off. Slowly pull that trigger. Yeah. All right, now, the first mistake we're making is we're looking at the paper. Okay. What are we supposed to do? Uh, look at the front side post. We put yeah. it right back on target. Come on over here. This could be a few things. You have the vast ventilation in here. It's kind of whatever. Also, you're straining your eyes probably doing something you haven't done before. Yeah. I'm willing to bet when you did the rifle training with Mike that you had optics. Yeah. So looking for scopes or yeah. optics, right? So right now, you have to worry about three things at once. When you're looking through a red dot or a scope, all you're doing is looking at the target. Yeah. And you let that dot fall. You don't even look at the dot, right? You look at the target and you just let the dot fall. With this, you have three things you gotta like consider, all right? And if you haven't done it before, for some people it can be a little bit difficult. So what we're gonna do is just, just relax, all right? Shake your eyes out, all right, cool. All right, we're gonna try it again, all right? You're doing fine, all right? And here's the thing. I don't bullshit people. Yeah. So if you weren't doing fine, I'd be like, those are really cool teal yeah. eyewear, you yeah. know? Oh, that's a neat pin on your weird designer tank yeah. top thing, you know? There's yeah. always something positive I can be fine to say. Yeah. So I'm never going to say you're doing good or you're not. Okay. I'm going to say you need to work on this. Yeah. So don't beat yourself up. Don't get fucking stressed out. Yeah. You got this. I think it's like when I lift up the gun, I can focus. And then like if I keep doing it, like I can't, like it's getting good. So I just pull the trigger a little quicker. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't matter how fast you pull the trigger. Yeah. What matters is if the gun stays stationary okay. while you do it. Mm -hmm. Good, you corrected yourself. I want you to lean forward a little bit, flat back, head up, head up, head up. There we go. Focus on that front side post. Go ahead and pull that trigger. Go ahead and pull that trigger. Excellent. Figure up on the frame, compress. That's another bullseye. Go. Okay, go ahead. Drive the gun out. Don't lean back when you do it. Go ahead, drive the gun out. Excellent. Focus on that front sight post. We're going to slowly pull the trigger and let the gun surprise you. Good right center, right? Yes. Yeah. Slowly pull that trigger let the gun surprise you. Right away. All right. Let it go. Let it pop up. Let it pop up. We need to be more active than that. Let it pop up. It's okay. We'll give up some control. Slowly pull that trigger. Slowly pull that Frame. Compress. All right. I want, you, I want you to play that back and watch your smile when you realize Giving up a little bit of control gives you more control. Yeah. You have to trust me, which means you have to trust the process. Remember, upside down, like this, it doesn't even make, just because I let the gun surprise me. Shout out to Paul at the Nashville Armory for doing a one-on-one -on -one with me and just going over the proper gun safety, the four firearm rules, and just helping me do better with my target shooting. And especially at an indoor range, guys, it is so different than shooting outdoor. I have shot indoor once and just going back the second time after shooting outdoors, it, is, it was a lot of, I had a lot of anxiety and it was just very loud hearing all those gunshots and it was very humid. So there was a lot of things that just made it a little different, a little, I was a little more nervous shooting indoor at first. Uh, so then we went out to the annex where there was only one other person shooting. So it was a little better, a little easier to concentrate. Uh, but at first I was a little overwhelmed and I think it really threw off my shooting at first. But the target shooting is something that I really, that I enjoy the most about firearms is practicing and getting better every time and hitting the target because it feels great. So Paul really helped me control my gun stance and I guess like the, the trigger control and really focus on the target. So there's just so many things that go into shooting a gun, guys. It's like the safety, know that you're handling it the right way, your form, um, how you're holding the gun. And there's just so much. So he really walked me through every step to make sure that correcting my stance or something like if I'm shooting and something's going off target, why it's going off target? What do I need to fix? So it really helped. But something that I learned in the classroom that's really important is your four firearm rules. 
So the first one is always treat your gun like it's loaded, even if you know it's not. And so you also with that first one, you should always know the status of your gun. And this is obviously important because it creates a habit. If you have to, every time you like, if you leave your gun unattended and you come back, you're gonna check to make sure that that gun is rendered and render it safe. But that creates a good habit of never making a mistake, right? Because sometimes you're feeling lazy or you're just, you've had a long day and you forget accidents happen. So that first rule is going to make a really good habit. The second rule is always point your gun in the safest direction. So this depends on your situation location. This all depends on that. Everyone's situation is different. Everyone's location is different. If you live in an apartment, the safest place to point uh, the muzzle of the gun is probably not going to be above you if you have someone living above you. If you have neighbors that way, you're not gonna wanna point your gun that way. Uh, it could be below you if you don't have anyone living beneath you, but you have to know the safest way to point your gun. Um, and also like location and the situation matters. So if there's someone breaking into your apartment, the safest direction might be at them. The third rule is you keep your finger off the trigger and frame until you are ready to shoot. So this again is just instilling those good shooting habits because mistakes happen. You don't wanna always have your finger on the trigger because you, sometimes if you are scared or you're in a situation, where you are relying on, I guess you would call it your adrenaline or something like that, where you get a little trigger happy. This just ensures that you have good habits and no accidents happen. And again, like I said, I want to know all of the proper rules to be safe with my gun. So the fourth rule is identify your target and know what's beyond it. This is really important because even when you're out shooting an outdoor range, you wanna know what's beyond that target because if there is someone's farm or something, you don't wanna shoot someone's cow. You don't wanna shoot a farmer's cow because you didn't know what was beyond your target. You missed your target or it went through. So that's really important for those kind of situations at the range. And also let's say you are concealed carrying, you are at a fair and there is an active shooter and you point him down, you see him, but there is a family behind him. That is not something that you want to point your gun at. So maybe you have to change your angle or switch your location. So those are the four rules to ensure that you are safe with a firearm. And again, really, really important practices. It's good habits and you wanna make sure that you don't make a mistake when you're owning something like that. So I hope this video helped. We are gonna be continuously doing videos of us showing how we're learning and going to the range and just these little things because this is a very new process to us and we wanna document it and show you guys that it is very attainable to learn how to use a firearm and get better at it because I already feel like I'm better at target shooting. I'm way more comfortable with it, but it's because of the practice and the knowledge behind it. We'll catch you next time.